enabling your people to have a space where they can come in and introduce themselves, feel mm -hmm. comfortable, get to know one another, and actually like build relationships between each other is, mm -hmm. that's like the thing yeah. that will carry you forward into the future. And without that, you just turn into like, you're just another corporate space. Hello, everyone. Hey, there you are. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's been a little while. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. So we started this series really just to interview DAOs that are building and that actually have like put the work in and have grown and are doing really cool things. So developer DAO was definitely one of the DAOs. I'm like, okay, we definitely have to interview you or anyone from your team just to hear your story on how you got there, but also... Like, I need you to be real and like share best practices. And like, if you could like even change some things um, prior, like let us know, because I know a lot of people here will be, you know, building DAOs. So sure. yeah, how about you share a little bit more about like your past and then um, we can open it up to like the developer DAO journey. Okay, uh, so my past, I've been a developer for seven years, I think. Uh, before that, I spent about a decade um, dropping out of college and filling vending machines, working for the Census Bureau, driving some trucks. Uh, so I've done a lot of different things, have a lot of different experience in life. Um, once I got into development, um, my big passion became open source. I've, mm -hmm. I've been really deeply committed to open source uh, for the past couple of years. I was um, one of the lead maintainers for Shocker UI, which is a React component library um, for about a year and a half, um, and just like kind of became obsessed with open source almost where like I had a job, you know, and as a dev, you get, you get paid pretty well. So it was like, I love my job, but then all I wanted to do was just work on these projects on online that didn't have anything to do with my job because it was like people from all over the world would come in and contribute to this project and help us build this thing not because they were getting paid, but because they liked the project or they liked us, right? Um, and that just felt like such a such a cool model to me compared to my experience of all the different jobs that I've had. So um, that kind of led me into Web3, I think, um, where I, I didn't really do anything until um, I read this uh, post by... Natter Dabit uh, about how to mint an NFT and he had created this like devs for revolution NFT series. Um, so I was like, well, this seems easy. So I did that. I minted the NFT. Um, it's the first time I'd really use like a, an Ethereum wallet. Um, and then the next thing I know, there's like a discord for this NFT <laughs> and there's like 5,000 people joining this discord. Um, so that was the beginning of developer DAO, we had all these people um, and like all this passion and excitement and everybody was having a lot of fun. So it was like, well, we could probably turn this into a DAO and see what we can when what we can do with that. So um, yeah, things started to come together. And that like, it was very exciting to me because it felt a lot like the things that I liked about open source, where it was like people just wanted to get together and hang mm -hmm. out and build stuff, not because you know, somebody was paying them to do it or yeah. somebody gave them a role but just because they could, right? Yeah. Um, and, but also there was the possibility of money uh, in, <laughs> in the crypto space. So that was like a nice improvement over open source where it was always just like, please sponsor us <laughs> or donate, please, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, and when did, um, when was that? Like when did developer now like really kick off? I think it started to come together in like, September of last year, I okay. want to say, where we started to talk about having a DAO and we kind of just like put together mm -hmm. a core team of people just to start organizing some things. Um, and then I think we, we finally sold out or we ran out of mintable NFTs at the end of November. So that was when it was like really solidified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, another question I'm curious about was like, how did you like decide who was on your core team? Jeez. Uh, I don't know that there really was um, a 
specific decision. It was just kind of like, okay, we've got a couple people. They've been very active and involved. Um, and just kind of like went with it, mm. which has been interesting. <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and I know you guys have like a, like a fully decked out notion page with like all your resources and details and stuff like so let's say if someone is here and, you know, they're just like kicking off a DAO, right? So what would you say are like the three things they should 100% start off when they're launching a DAO? Uh, community, community, and community. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I've always been so excited talking to you because yeah. you know, I think to me the big thing that I've learned with this is like, and it's kind of hard to extrapolate lessons learned that to share with other people mm -hmm. because developer DAO was such a unique thing. Matter yeah. was already had a huge following. So we, our situation was starting with thousands of people and then it's like, okay, how do we turn this into something? Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas most people are just have an idea and they want to build something out of that idea. So yeah, it's a little different. Um, but yeah, I community to me has been like the single most important thing that mm -hmm. I think we've kind of, always put on the sideline, right? Like, cause in web three, it's very easy to like, want to focus on token cause you have to have token yeah. or NFTs cause you gotta have NFTs to be legit, right? But like enabling your people to have a space where they can come in and introduce themselves, feel mm -hmm. comfortable, get to know one another and actually like build relationships between each other is, mm -hmm. that's like the thing yeah. that will carry you forward into the future. And without that, you just turn into like, you're just another corporate space. Yeah. Um, you know, like we, we've kind of struggled with some situations where like we've had a lot of good progress, but I get really frustrated because sometimes it feels like the only times I get to really see and hang out with some of our most engaged members are like in a team meeting or project meeting. Yeah. And it's just like, that's not a social space, right? <laughs> I can't really get to know you because yeah. we're just talking about business stuff. So community is definitely number yeah. one, I would say. No, I, I feel that. It's like something else that we've been talking about lately too. It's like a lot of people have full-time jobs and then, you know, are part of DAOs on the side. So like just learning how to like balance, again, like your in-person life with your virtual, you know, your DAOs, your NFT projects is like, if whoever figures that out, like, let us know. <laughs> Cause I feel like that's Seriously. like something I'm trying to figure out for myself. Cause it's like, you know, tending to all my virtual needs to my in-person needs. It's like, how do you find that balance? Um, but I'm curious to hear some of your community ritual rituals that you have for developer DAO. So I think we've, we've been very lucky in that we've had some very dynamic, um, like spontaneous rituals pop up without having to have like a top down planning, you know, like mm -hmm. nobody forced these things. So we had, um, we have way too many channels on our Discord. <laughs> so it's like 5,000 people or it's like 400 channels or something. Yeah. But we just made these five voice chats early on, um, mm -hmm. voice chat channels. So we have voice chat one, two, three, four, and five, very generic. Mm -hmm. For some reason, voice chat five turned into like this memed out space. You can almost always find people hanging out in voice chat five. Mm -hmm. So it's <laughs> fairly reliable little ritual without actually being an official ritual. Um, mm. We've also got, um, so lately we've been working with like an initiative leads mm -hmm. team, which is kind of trying to drive a lot of the progress in the DAO. Um, and so that's been doing like a weekly uh, Thursday, like a weekly meeting. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of like our most official ritual um, yeah. lately where it's kind of like the most active people in the DAO are just getting together to kind of try to drive forward our tokenomics proposal, get that put in place, drive forward some of our budgets for season one. Um, so a lot of like official stuff is happening through that ritual. Yeah, no, I, I like that a lot. Um, even like, you know, rituals can be as simple as, you know, tip Tuesday or like, I know you guys have a newsletter, you know, sending out that newsletter every week. That way people know what, like when to expect it. Um, especially if you have a busy life, right? So like just doing the low end or like the easier stuff, uh, definitely works. But also another thing is like, 
you know, not taking things personal in the community space where I'm sure a lot of people read it. Like I've even seen some of them and like, I don't say, Hey, thanks. Right. So, you know, if anyone here is building a DAO, like make sure, you know, you're able to like separate your like emotions, like, Hey, they don't like me rather than like, Hey, they're busy as well. And they're trying to figure it out. Um, so another question I did have was when you created your governance structure, what was like, was it a team decision? Did you guys bring in like an expert for that? Um, how'd you guys like figure that out? Uh, geez, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't bring in an expert. Um, uh-huh. it was kind of a mix of like the founding team having some conversations about like, what do we think this could look like? Um, and then turning that into some proposals that we took to the community and mm-hmm. work with the community to, to shape a little bit and get past. Um, yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the things looking back was just like, it feels like just kind of a lot of chaos, which I think is pretty natural. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, especially in the DAO space, it's like nobody, there's not really a ton of people who have started a DAO before, right? Like there's no, mm-hmm. you can't like go torrent a bunch of DAO books and learn how to like start <laughs> DAOs, right? Like it's, yeah. it's still such a new space. So it's just kind of like, we just got some people, they know some things about different stuff. We get them all together and try to do the, the best that we can with it. Right. So yeah, um, yeah it, it, I think early on it was like, pretty chaotic and we kind of formed like a, a governance guild mm. um, and that's been where like most of the people who care deeply about governance processes and things have kind of coalesced and so that's been kind of our place since then of like we have governance questions and we're trying to figure out how to move forward with things they're like the official org within our DAO that mm. helps us kind of figure those things out yeah no that's definitely hard and um, I see Sid had a question here, and I want to welcome Alakai, Gabriel, Olasani, Jadon, Shimon, and Chad to the um, the talk here with Developer DAO. Um, so Sid's question was: How do you reward your users for going for doing things beneficial to the DAO? <laughs> uh, so so far, it's been like thumbs up and a pat on the back. Um, <laughs> but our our so. The hard part of DAOs also, like there's lots of hard parts, right? But, yeah. Um, moving from this like cool digital idea into the real world where like you want to financially compensate people mm-hmm. is very difficult because the real world has laws and regulators and tax mm-hmm. systems, right? So that has been a major focus for um, our like operations team. We are finally almost to the point where we are releasing uh, our token. Hopefully, in the next couple weeks, actually, or very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, we have a couple different ways that we're rewarding users. Um, we did a an early contributor reward round, basically in Coordinate. So we put all of our contributors into Coordinate and had them basically vote for who they wanted to distribute tokens to. Um, and I think that was like 10, 10% of our initial token launch go to initial contributors. So it was kind of a democratic way to, to spread that out. Um, but then, you know, once we get the token launched, we'll get into season one. That's where we can get into more official ways to um, reward users for, mm-hmm. um, and we'll do that through like, projects and budgets and things like that. So people who are actually trying to build something for the DAO um, can propose a budget um, and then use that budget to pay their own members or whatever they want to do with that budget. Oh, wow. Okay. So you guys had to go through like a whole, like, do you guys hire a lawyer or you guys just did it internally? Um, we, yeah. So we ended up, it's like through an outside legal group. I mm. I am not a legal type person, so I don't even you break have the a rules, good right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just let other people who are smarter than me. I'm like, yeah, approach. yeah. So it seems like from what our conversation has been so far, 
community, you know, empowering members, legal are things definitely you need to focus on when starting a DAO. I do have a question about selecting what DAO tools to use. Like how did you guys select or what do you guys use for DAO tools right now? Uh, so I think like we're using Notion a lot, mm -hmm. which <laughs> it's kind of a tool for a DAO. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're using Notion, Discord, uh, Discourse is where we do like official proposals mm -hmm. and okay. budget type stuff. Um, we're using Snapshot for um, snapshots on proposals. Uh, and then we started using Dwork to manage tasks for some of our projects like within our, our guilds and different teams. Um, and that's actually been working out really well. Dwork is pretty awesome. So mm -hmm. shout out to them. Uh, it's been nice. <laughs> it's called D-Work? Um, yeah, D-Work. Okay, I'll check that out. It, it, it like, um, it's kind of like Web3's version of Jira, basically, minus all the terribleness of Jira, which is pretty great. And it syncs very well with GitHub issues yeah. um, and pull requests, <laughs> so it's been really nice. Yeah, no, that, that's, um, that's interesting. I'll, I'll check that out. Um, and then I have like two more questions for, or two or three more questions and then we can head into the breakout rooms. Um, sure. So one of them is, so if you, if you could find, yeah, if you could find resources right now to like really help you with your DAO, what type of resources would it be? Like um, whether it's blogs or videos, like what do you think you need the most support in right now? I think it's still, I'd still say it's community. I mean, it's like building a community is very difficult, um, especially a community as, as large as this one where you already yeah. have a ton of people. Like understanding how to take full advantage of that and really mm -hmm. get people integrated with each other is difficult. Um, I, I think, you, are you part of Rosie Land? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I sent okay, it to yeah. you, you, actually. I think you recommended that to yeah. me. So I've been a paid subscriber of Rosie Land. Oh, nice. That's been really great, but like, yeah that's just one source of content, right? Like yeah. I need, I need all of the content. So yeah. that's that. And um, yeah, I think just like dealing with large orgs in general, just like that content related to, to that, like that's kind of our unique challenge is starting with so many people. Yeah. Know, put us in a weird spot. Yeah. I feel that I, I get, I get your community concerns. Um, even like sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm like figuring out what to prioritize, but just like a quick tip from my end is like, you know, developer DAO, although it has like so many, you know, members just try to be really good at one thing. And that way people will be like developer DAO is the best at this, you know? And then yeah. also like that way you can create content and whatever resources to be the best at that. Um, and then if they, if they don't find value from it, they like, okay, go somewhere else, you know? Okay. Not right. necessarily, <laughs> But like that yeah. way you can like, you know that you're focusing on your goals that align with your DAO mission as well. Um, and then another question I have is, I would love for That's you to, yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll chat offline because I like this conversation is past due. Um, but another question I did have was like, I'd love for you to check out Upstream and just give feedback on like what we can improve to start it out. Cause like our whole goal is literally create an easy way to start a DAO that like has a no code solution, easy way for the UX to like get members to vote and add proposals and all that. So um, I'll definitely want to, I'll definitely want to send you a link to our demo. And the last question I have is, you know, Upstream was created to give and receive help. And we leave every event with the same question, which is like, what can we do to support you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, geez. <laughs> I don't know. That's a tough, that's a tough question. I think, I think what would be helpful for like developer DAO from a, a, a tooling standpoint would be um, having some like, I guess, predefined patterns or like ways that groups in the down space tend to like work together that are supported by tools. Um, Cause I think like starting a DAO, there's so many different ways you could structure it. Like there's an infinite number of ways, right? Like you could do mm -hmm. guilds, you could do 
teams, you could do pods if you've seen worker protocols pods idea, right? Mm -hmm. But I think like having some basic just like patterns for how to set things up would be extremely helpful for mm. the DAO and different groups inside of the, the DAO, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So just figuring out how to like really establish the core groups and the working pods. Awesome. And where can we find you? Are you're on Twitter? Let's let me get Twitter and then drop in the chat. Um, Twitter.com slash grow underscore love. Uh, and then I'm with dash heart everywhere else, which is basically just GitHub and discord. <laughs> don't, don't really do many of the other socials anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right. I was like on LinkedIn today for like the first time ever. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I remember every six months I remember that LinkedIn exists. <laughs> about it for the rest of the year. <laughs> you probably have like so many messages in there. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's all recruiters, so it's just like whatever. Oh my gosh. You're like, no, I'm on, I'm on the Dallas space, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Web3. I uploaded to the singularities. So oh my like, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again with Heart. We're gonna head into the breakout rooms, but I really enjoyed this talk. I look forward to setting up a one-on-one -on -one soon to talk about like how we can talk about community and thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to do the breakout room. So feel free to meet somebody amazing and then we'll wrap it up and then I'll bring everybody back to close out the room.